All right, welcome into another edition of Catching Up with Tommy Mack here on 1010XL's podcast platform at 1010XL.com. Of course, on the 1010XL app as well. We are live on Facebook, on 1010's page, my page as well, and then we share it all over the place. You see us on YouTube, 1010XL's YouTube channel, all over social media, my own as well, and uh, right here at the 1010XL podcast. Studios brought to you by my good friends at Team Tommy Mac. I got two of them on me today. Beach Life Rentals, all up and down the beach from Atlantic all the way down to Flagler. Anything you could think of that you need, chairs, umbrellas, whatnot, they handle it all for you. And of course, j Dog, all you uh, contractors out there, make sure you take a look at at J-Dog. We'll talk about Team Tommy Mac in just a little bit. Lots to get into. TPC, a huge success. St. Patrick's Day, free agency. The draft is right around the corner now. We'll talk about the proposed trade uh, that uh, allegedly happened uh, via Mia O'Brien. So, great job, Mia, getting that done. It's a national story now. A trade for Brandon Ayuk that would include our 17 plus Zay Jones. Uh, but before we get into all that, let's welcome in Grammage. Grammage, good morning to you, pal. Good morning, sir. Happy Tuesday. Hey, happy Tuesday to you. Uh, busy week last week, eh? Big the time. players. Man, what a great, I tell you, here's a great, first of all, the weather was phenomenal. It right? was. I have my whole family and my, my daughter Kelsey's in town for spring break. My youngest is on spring break. We didn't leave the beach Saturday or Sunday. I mean, not not even a wink. When we came home Sunday, turn on the TV and the last two guys are putting to try to tie it to take it in to the yeah. playoff. And I'm like, perfect timing. This yeah. is unbelievable. And uh, the second guy, oh, I called it a rim job, but it did. And it went, <laughs> shink. I mean, just a little less speed. And that sucker's in there, Xander man. Shoffley. Just unbelievable. He the, unbelievable. He does the, the he he's balling up the fist for the fist bump because he's thinking so it's close. going in. And it was the, right on. Uh, yeah. He that, had the line. Oh. He had the line. The speed was a little off, but uh, golf gods were cruel man, with that it, one, man. Yeah, Scotty Scheffler, man. I didn't see it live, but saw the replay. Just un- unbelievable golf by that man, uh, being a repeat champion out of TPCA. Congrats to the players. You guys always put on a great show, and you did it once again. So congratulations. Not only do they pr- provide a great show, they provide a lot of of uh, assistance in the market, raising millions and millions and millions of dollars each and every tour. That's the P- or each and every time the PJ Tour does that. Of course, St. Patrick's Day on Sunday. Uh, again, I I sat on the beach. I had a couple Guinnesses. Uh, great time with the fam. Um, you know the incident on uh, down at Jack's Beach. That's just a damn shame. Now nationally, you know, it's, it's funny. Lately, I've been defending our city. Like I've been like people want to crap on it. I'm like, what are you talking about? You're not, if you live here, right? And like I do and you do, you, you look at some of the comments, you're like, man, you obviously haven't spent any time here. And then we have an incident where there's shootings and fights and all this stuff. You're like, oh, come on, man. Look, you saw what Miami Beach did with spring break. I don't know if we do that here, but you know, not a, not a good look for tourism and not a good look whatsoever. Hey, not, it, that doesn't happen. That hardly ever happens. Am I right? I mean, shootings happen in Jack's Beach, don't get me wrong, but not, they're not prevalent. You know what I mean? Just the, 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 I'm, we're in that area all the time. I mean, you're in the area, you go to the Ritz, I go to the Ritz on occasion, a little young for me, you know, That's for me. That's the first, like, big thing where they closed down the whole district, like, yeah. telling everybody to get down. So that was the first. Shelter in place, man. Was that in, the first shelter in place, maybe? I think so. Yeah, that's just awful. I don't know about the guns, man. I mean, look, what, just I mean, I get the fights, although, I don't know. Anytime you get teenagers together, 300, 400, I don't care what they look like, it's, <laughs> there's going to be some kind of issue going on. You know what I mean? I mean, I was a teenager once, too. We weren't like we were sitting around, you know, picking daisies with 300 of us large. You know what I mean? So, uh, you know, look, I just hope, you know, obviously a life loss, so that's awful, and pray for the, the, the victims that have been shot and people that went through it because that's got to be scary, man. That's got to be scary. You got to you gotta be careful out there. There's no doubt about it. All right, let's get into some Jags talk. We'll talk a little bit about the NFL as well. Of course, uh, free agency still ongoing, kind of wrapping up, I guess. There's a few out there. We won't get into that. The draft is coming. I think the Jags are in a good spot. Look, they've done in free agency what you're supposed to do, right? You fill needs in free agency. You need to fill a need in the interior offensive line at center. Filled. Need to fill the defensive tackle position. Filled. 
right? You uh, you look at uh, other players that have brought in that are going to fill needs. Savage uh, going to fill a need. Um, you know, we're going to look at uh, uh, Travis Giveson, one of the new guys, fills the need, comes off the bench. Can he provide some pass rush, you know? And then you get to the draft and you're 17. Now you can really pick hopefully best player. Because there's a lot that are sitting there. I was looking at it today, man. There are a lot that are sitting there. But uh, Eric Armstead, uh, probably for me, the top of the class of signing. I think he's gonna, he's just going to be an animal. What he's going to do for Josh, what he's going to do for Trayvon, uh, what he's going to do for that defense overall, that D-line especially, I think is going to be significant. Uh, obviously, he uh, you know he says he's got five to six years, got to stay healthy. Uh, but I think Eric Armstead's a a great choice, and uh, look, he immediately improves our defense. So I thought that was a great pick. Feels really similar to when they signed Calais. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, they're both six eight, so that helps. <laughs> now look, top of the food chain. Calais is Calais has an argument for best free agent signing in the history of the Jaguars. No doubt, no doubt. I would put ten ten XL's very own Leon Cersei at number one, but. Okay. Clayus is right there. Yeah. Um, so Clayus was that, phenomenal in three that's years. That's lofty expectations that's for to put sure. on Eric Armstead. But yep. just in terms of you can tell that he's a really good dude, is going to be really involved in the community, that type yeah. of stuff, yeah. which is which yeah. is Clayus to a T. Yeah. Wrecker on the inside. Yeah. Should really help the edge guys. Yeah, the off field stuff, the locker room stuff, that's gravy for me. On the field, he's going to make a huge impact without yeah, a doubt. Because, you know, you think about, like, when Calais was here, like, when Walter Payton was, oh, yeah. was really it's awesome important. and all that. Very important. It's but, great. But that would have all not been nearly as prevalent had he not been an absolute force on the field. It helps, definitely. It was the, product, it was the yeah. fact that this yeah. guy could not be blocked. No. Well, hopefully Eric Armstead brings some of that to the table. You're going to have to double him, which does what? Frees up Josh Allen, frees up Trayvon Walker. I think it's going to be an, a very, very uh, interesting defense. Of course, you get Gabe Davis. I'm, I I threw it out there on Twitter. Okay, I know a lot of people talk about the Ayuk, uh, uh trade, proposed trade. Um, doesn't look like they're going to do it. I, I don't know if I do it just cause I think you got to pay him as well. I don't know if I'm ready to do that. Um, look, here's a question. Gabe Davis signs a nice deal. I think 13, four, what, 13 a year, something like that. 14 a year, um, three year, 39 mil. Uh, he played, you know, basically wide receiver two with Stefan Diggs being number one. Um, but he's big, he's fast, um, his yards per catch is ridiculous, 17 yards almost per catch over a four-year period. Um, he is productive, he needs to be more productive, I think, in the red zone, but could he? So, say you don't, forget the draft, because we'll go through that, but you sit still, you stand pat at wide up. Now, you're expecting Zay to be healthy. And it's, he's got to be healthy. If he's not healthy, then no, it's not going to work. Because you need Zay, Zay's speed on the other side. Now, let's keep in mind here for a second, okay? Last year, we were fawning over Zay Jones. He looked like a number one. He was, you know, he looked fast. Of course, Ridley came in and stole the show in camp of, anyway. Um, but Zay Jones, when healthy, is a very productive wide receiver. And I like him as a number two. So the question is, do you need a quote-unquote number one, or are you saying, hey, Gabe, it's your chance to be number one in our in our offense. We're going to move you around, and we'll, we'll interchange you guys. But now that doesn't mean you don't address it in the draft, because you do. You got to – it's it's pretty deep wide receiver class. So you, you got to add some speed, some talent to that, to that wide receiver room. I do believe that. Um, do you do it at 17? Maybe. Depends who's there. Um, especially if you stay status quo right now. I would do the trade for Ayuk, like I'd give the 17th for him. But the contract, I don't know. I don't know if with everything else we got to do, you know, not just this year, but in the future, uh, and heavy decisions to be made, I'm, I might rather take my chances on what I have and bring in a rookie that can help me with some speed down the field. At one, or at, in the first round? Possibly. Depends who's there, but yeah, possibly. I still tend to think they're going to take corner. Yeah, at seventeen, there's going to be a few right there. That Wiggins kid should be there. Nate Wiggins, yeah. between Nate Wiggins, Terry on Arnold, and Quinion Mitchell, 
there's yeah. an extremely high likelihood that at least one of them, probably two. I think they're they may be gone by then. Kool Aid may be around. Um, I'm not I'm not very high on Kool Aid. No, I think Arnold's a much better. Well, player. look, whoever can play man, that's what Dar. What did Darby say? I play man. Why are you here? Oh, I play man. You know, I know we don't want to. We don't play man. We don't play zone. <laughs> Whatever. He he's a press corner. You need those. Here's a question for you. You think they believe in Tyson Campbell still? Pause. I think it's a wait and s- I think it's a prove it year for Tyson Campbell. I think this year for Tyson Campbell is very similar to what last year was for Josh Allen. Okay. Prior to the injury, we believed he could he was our number one corner, although Darius Williams was having a great year, right? Who's now longer here and goes back to the Rams on a nice deal. Um, if Tyson doesn't get injured, I think he has a lot better year. I think with corners, look, if you got a hammy groin, it's not fully healed, it's hard to play 100%. I'll give him that. If you've ever pulled your hammy, you know exactly what I'm talking about. Even if it's just, you know, in recreation, you can't do anything. You can't run. You can't stretch it out. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's really tough. Take it to the elite level and take it to an elite injury and think about how they try to make that happen. Very hard, especially during a year, to heal from that thing and be able to compete at that speed, at that level. So, look, I, they got to like him for his his length. He's, he is fast when he's healthy. He's a he's big kind of guy. He can be physical. I, I, I got to imagine Ryan Nielsen wants that out of his corners because he is going to ask them for press coverage, which means get up in that face and dictate where that wide receiver is going to go, not the other way around. I kind of tend to think this is a personal preference. I don't know what their board is. I tend to think Quinion Mitchell fits that profile the best. Yeah. But I don't know if he's going to be Kid from Toledo. I don't know if he'll be there, though. You know, you know what's funny about the draft is the run-ons that happen. Some team will take a corner or whatever just after the 10th. Next team goes, oh, no, oh, no. Or someone that needs a corner, oh, we better jump up. Next thing you know, you got three or four. Qu- it happens every year. Do you it happens think, every year. Wide receiver, corner, it doesn't matter. What positions do you think we'll get those early runs for? QB for sure, because you know those, yeah, those yeah. but that's, that's that's a little a, bit different. Man. How about this J.J. McCarthy stuff? I know. I didn't watch enough Michigan to say one way. I just, man, it's so hard. I think that's the toughest position to evaluate college to pro. Well, Because college, you can make it look easy because you're just gifted. You know what I mean? You got a good arm. You can move around. You're smart. You know what I mean? But that's not enough. You know, just to, as, as we all know across the league – Talent alone doesn't get it done at the NFL level. I think it's one of the hardest positions to evaluate in terms of can they take their game in college and bring it to the NFL level at the same level. And I feel like it's hard when you're evaluating and you're watching. I mean, I'm not some huge like tape film guy, but I feel like if you are, I feel like it's difficult a lot of times to decipher if a guy is throwing with anticipation or if he's just throwing to a guy that's just wide open. That's open, right. Like, uh, I was listening to a podcast that had Todd McShay on yeah, uh, yeah. a couple Probably weeks ago, good. and they were talking about when Todd McShay spoke with two years ago, he spoke with Brian Kelly before one of their games, and yeah. Jaden, he was saying about Jaden Daniels, like, at the time, Jaden Daniels had only thrown, like, one interception for the whole year or something, and uh, the whole media was praising him for his lack of interceptions, yep. and it was pissing Brian Kelly off because he was like, no, he like because now Jaden Daniels is feeding to that narrative of oh I don't throw any interceptions so he's waiting for guys to get two three steps open before he pulls the trigger on throwing it. He's like, if Jaden would throw with anticipation, it would yeah. unlock our offense to a new level. He's like, I almost hope he throws a couple more picks because it yeah. means he's actually trusting what is supposed to happen within the offense. Right. That, in my opinion, is the biggest step. From college to pro, we saw Tua has struggled with that because Tua got so used to in college. Just getting these wide open dudes, right? right. And you're, you're thrown to a spot in the NFL. I think Trevor dealt part. with a lot of that his first oh, no season. No doubt, absolutely. I think Trevor at Clemson, you know, he had T. Higgins for all those years. Yep. T. Higgins was head and shoulders better than all these DBs guarding him week I'm to week. Saying, in the it was ACC. hard. It's hard. Like Bryce Young, I would always, the guys were wide open. Of course, you're going to make the throw. Right. You're supposed to make the throw. And it doesn't make you elite. And it becomes a hell of a lot harder, I would imagine. I've never played quarterback, so I, don't, I guess I don't technically know, but I would yep. imagine it becomes a hell of a lot harder to throw a guy open that is currently not open. Yeah. But I am trusting that when I release this ball now, by the time the ball gets to him, he will have gotten open based on his route. No, right. You throw him open. 
versus yeah. I see him two steps ahead. No, right. Because the guys don't really get two steps ahead in the NFL. No. It's very rare. Very this is rare. a blown coverage Tyree or something. Kill, maybe. He might get two. He's in trouble again. Nick right, guy. and th- there's a and there's an extremely short list of guys that will get that type of separation. Yep. And there's a short list of plays in a game where anybody yeah. at all will get that type of separation. Yeah. You're not going to move the ball by just getting the guys that are two steps open every yep. play. That's why, you know, again, evaluating tape. You know, if they're throwing it to a spot, sometimes you don't know if the quarterback's off or if the receiver's off. Are they in the right spot at the right time? You know, every route's got to – Got a place where that ball is going to be or should be at a certain time. Uh, a lot of timing in the NFL, and you're right. Nobody's wide, wide open like they are in college. But interesting that he is jumping up the boards. You even see in Minnesota, uh, maybe taking him at 11 or or even moving, moving up in that uh, regard. Um, what about Brandon Ayuk, Graham? I'm just curious. Would you make the trade with? Would you do that deal? Say the, the money would, wasn't it? Maybe he'd just play on whatever he's on now. What, it was Zay and pick 17, right? Yeah. No. Yeah. I don't, I don't think so. He's a really good player, but maybe he's, Brandon Ayuk, but maybe he's just so. a really good player in that system. I'm not saying he's a system guy, but you know Shanahan's got a very powerful passing system. I mean, especially when Purdy is in his game and you know delivering the ball on time at the right spot. 17 was a little rich for me. Yeah. Now, if they... If either A, their first round pick was like twenty five or later, yeah, then I I consider it more. And then, or if they wanted pick, to I think forty eight is their second pick or right. something. Well, you wouldn't swap, but yeah, I, I don't know. I'd, I'd probably take my chances on a on a younger wide out. Now, if I didn't have Gabe, that'd be different. But I'm expecting Gabe. Look, just because he played number two to Buffalo doesn't mean he can't be your ex down here. You know, he's got all the tangibles to do it, but we'll see I just think uh, with Gabe, how that shakes out. But I'd be okay with it. Think about this line. I didn't mean to cut you off. Davis, Zay, Kirk, Ingram, ETN. It's pretty good. See who we get in the draft. You know, see who we add to the mix. You know, I don't know. This good, core, can, good you, you talked about this a couple weeks ago because you mentioned Game Davis on the pod before, yep. before free agency started. I do think that Thank you, this... Grammage. I did. I'm not one of those. No, I'm just kidding. I know uh, a lot of people out there, I called it. Like, I don't really care. I just want our team to be good. But I've got a clip of you existing pre-free agency saying I would yeah. love Gabe Davis in Jacksonville. Yeah. Um, I did. I do think because of Gabe Davis's size and the type of receiver he is, I do think it's arguably the best complement of receivers to each other since Trevor's time here. Okay. Um. Last year, I know you had Ridley, who was supposed to be your wide receiver one, and, yeah. and you know, up and down your kind of debate, whatever. Yeah. He's a wild card it, but to Rid- a certain degree. But Ridley doesn't have the size Davis does. Right. And if there was one knock on all the other receivers, there's not really, there wasn't really a big guy. Gabe is that big guy. Yeah. He's that big target. You hope in a perfect world that that can really help fix your red zone problems. Yep. That's when you need that big target. That's what I, I'm hoping he's here for. Yeah, and to give the quarterback a bigger target to throw to. Nothing wrong with that at all. And Gabe, at least two years ago now, one of his main strengths was was touchdowns. Yeah. He caught a lot of touchdowns. Yeah. So Yeah. He can get downfield. So if that's your plan B, I think it's a pretty good plan B if he's my ex and Zay's healthy. Zay's gotta be healthy. He look, that brace killed him last year. I remember. Ta- I mean, I felt terrible for him. Trying, he's trying to play, and the bra- the brace is so clunky. He can't, he can't do anything. And then he had the ankle too. I think so. He was he was banged up. So you know, look. I uh, and again, I'll go back and I camp. You only you got to take it with a grain of salt. But he looked he looked really good in camp. I mean, he looked really good. Great shape. He was fast. He looked big. I mean, we were all like, wow. He looks like he could. Press for number one. Now, granted, they had Ridley, so that wasn't going to happen. But, you know, can Gabe Davis be the guy uh, we will see about that? Um, any other free agents out there that would intrigue you? Connor Williams, it's interesting. This ACL they're saying is significant damage. So he must have done more than just the ACL. Because I've done my ACL and meniscus. You can totally come back from that. I mean, it, it's a painful rehab. The meniscus, I think, is more painful than the actual ACL. But if you're still having issues with that, 
maybe you shredded the whole thing. You know, your MCL, your LCL, your, you know. But you can come back from that, too. There are guys that have come back from that. But do you take a flyer on Connor Williams? Hey, come up here, get healthy. He can play guard. He played guard with Dallas before he went to center uh, with Miami. Miami already replaced him with Aaron Brewer, the center from the Titans. Gave him a three-year deal. Is he a guy? Uh, Tredarius uh, White, the corner. I didn't know he's still looking for work for from Bills. Buffalo. I don't know what his Achilles price tag is. Right, he's coming back from the Achilles, right? You take a flyer on those guys who come later. Like, hey, man, if no, if he's still out there, we can fit him. Let's see if he can do something. You know, maybe or, he can. Or if he's still available, like during camp, one of your corners gets hurt. Yeah, type thing. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, just you never know in this game. Mike Williams, another wide receiver, let go by the Chargers, just banged up. I saw where he, out of 115 games roughly, he's played in 90. So he's missed 25 games in his career. It's not terrible. How many How many years? Is he eight? He's about eight years. Uh, right? Is he longer? Like that. Maybe 10? That yeah, that right. doesn't seem too bad. Would you take a flyer on him? He was due $18 million. I think with Gabe, I wouldn't, not for this team. I don't know. I think I'm, I think I'm going draft with the wide receiver. Maybe not number one, you know seventeen, but I got to address it. You should be able to find. They say it's a real deep class. If I'll I be honest, I looked through them. I, I I knew the top guys. You, you hear everybody talk about them. The other guys, you know, I don't. If I had to guess, I bet I they'll take much. corner at seventeen. Yeah, and I bet they'll take receiver in the second round. Yeah, and in, in that range of guys, you're talking Xavier Leggett from South Carolina. Yep. Ricky Pearsall from Florida. From Florida, yeah. I like Lad him. McConkie from Georgia. From Georgia, yeah. That's kind of the tier of guy you're talking about. Those guys about. are slot kind of guys. Yeah, they Those are. last two, but I think they're going to be good. They get in the right system. They're going to be tough to cover one on one. I agree. Both those kids. I agree. Yeah. Um, and I feel like if you have a healthy Zay and Gabe, I feel like you're 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 relatively well taken care of outside. So and deep speed. Got yeah. It both. So so then you have Ingram. Yep. Kirk. And you have Kirk just eating linebackers right. alive in the slot. That's what you want. And then you have a another kind of kind of young Christian Kirk that you can hope to groom and sort of be yeah. opposite him and have an extra matchup nightmare. Yeah. You know, because because what if what if it's third down, they bring a nickel into the game and they gotta put a nickel on Christian Kirk. Yeah. You well go now I've got wide. a guy opposite him who I think can Yep. who they still got to put a linebacker on or a safety or somebody yep. who who is not comfortable Correct. guarding a shifty slot one-on-one, yep. man, that could be a lot of extra first downs. Yeah, And, and, and we, we've talked about this before. What are those guys really valuable for? Yeah, It's third and three. I need six. By the way, we, we haven't added uh, – now, I know he's a return guy, but uh, Duvernay can play wide out. He can give you some snaps, more than Agnew. He's more of a polished wide receiver. Then Agnew, and I like you. We liked Agnew. I mean, I thought Agnew could have been used a little bit different, but that's another guy they added that could fill a nice little need for them. You go four wides, and what if he's your fourth? That guy's shifty and speed faster than Parker. Parker, look, he's you know, I don't know. Does uh, Duvernay does he uh, punt return or just kick? He does both for sure. Yeah, see, now there's competition there. I like Parker. I, I wasn't as high on him as everybody else. But I think as the year went on, you know, his return abilities got better. He was getting north-south quicker. Um, had a nice return towards the end of the year. I think like 22-yarder, something like that. Um, he's got to catch the ball better, but so does everybody else. If they draft a receiver who's kind of a slot guy, who yeah. I think if if they take a guy in the second, I think that's the type of guy who's going to be available. And you now have Duvernay. And you have Christian Kirk back healthy. Yep, it might it might all of a sudden become pretty pretty tough for Parker Washington to make the team. Yeah, it might. Although they keep what six or seven, so we'll see. If they keep seven, he'd probably be the seventh. But yeah, Gabe Zay Kirk, rookie Duvernay. Yep, that's five. Am I missing somebody? No. Who'd you okay. say? Go ahead. Gabe, Gabe Zay, Zay Kirk Kirk Duvernay Duvernay rookie. Right. Yeah. I'm trying to think about missing somebody. Well, Ingram, if you're going to count Ingram. Well, no, but I'm talking like just for wide the, outs. for the roster. Right. You're keeping, if you keep five wide outs. Right. And if you keep a six, there would be Parker probably. Yep. So, okay. 
Yeah. He, he, he might have a chance. Yeah, they like him. They definitely like him. So, you know, we'll see how they they bring that all together. Um, you're right on DBs. There's plenty of them there. Uh, that kid out of uh, Missouri at 17 could be. If there's a runoff, the Rake Straw kid, I didn't watch tape on him, but you see a lot of high marks from these guys. I like looking at, I'll go to different sites, maybe three or four, and just see their, I don't even look at the mock drafts. I look at their their how they rank the players. And then you can always, you know, I've seen that guy around here. You know, they some guys you're like, whoa. Like there's a tackle out of uh, Arizona, Jordan, um, uh, what's his name? Morgan, Jordan Morgan. Now, I so I looked him up, right? Because I'm like, wow, well, I haven't heard this kid's name. I want to see. So the positives are he's athletic, athletic, athletic. Everything's athletic. Negatives, finesse player, not aggressive. I'm like, Nope. <laughs> that is not what we need. Doug may Scratch, like that. Pause. Yeah. Doug may like that kind of stuff, but no, 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 no. We're, we, we've been through that. We need some viciousness up I there. I want mean, up front. Yeah. vicious blocks. Yeah. Nasty. Exactly. That's what I want. But no question. Let me ask you this. Yeah. Let's say, let's say it is corner at 17. Or that, that you, okay. Let's say that they really believe that that's probably who they're going to go with. And let's say they love Quinion Mitchell. Okay. I'm just making up a name. Yeah, from Toledo. Yeah. Say he's there at 14. Okay. And you've got some teams in between you and 14. Yep. That you think may snag him. Do you think they'll they'll potentially move up a couple of spots? They won't move up 10 mm-hmm. spots or anything like that, but do you think they might move up two to three spots maybe and try to... If they like a guy that much... Or do you think there's enough depth or where they're like, we'll just take the best available? I think they'll take best. To- if, if Darby wasn't there, I would think maybe so. But that's what free agency is for, right? You fill the void. He replaces Williams. Maybe you're expecting Tyson to be your guy, right? So you don't force the corner pick. But if one's there and you feel like, look, look what, what's it going to be? It's going to be uh, corner, wide receiver, Maybe somewhere on the O-line, maybe an edge, maybe, although they've addressed that in free agency. It depends who's there. I mean, if Verse falls, do you grab him? If Chop, the kid from uh, Penn State's there, do you grab him? That kid's workout. How, how about that workout from UCLA kid, Latou? Did you see his? He's a big dude. He can move He can move really good. I mean, that's another guy. Like, do you just – look, what's the old saying? Can never have enough pass rush. Can never have enough pass rush. And now that you've added Eric Armstead to hand, it's, I'll tell you one thing it's going to feel like with Calais. It, Josh is going to feel like a rookie. <laughs> He's going to be like, oh, this is going to be. And now Trayvon's come along on the other side. He's not Agakwe yet. He may be better than Agakwe when it's all said and done, even after this year. Uh, remains to be seen. But I like his upside. Bring that, you know what I mean? Now you bring it. You got Gibson that comes off the bench. Maybe you got another guy that comes off the bench. I was you know, going to say, the, the Gibson signing, in my opinion, tells me they may not love the edge class, at least in terms of high picks. Yeah. At least in terms of the first yeah. three to four rounds. Was it Nielsen that was with him in Chicago? Did I read? No, he wasn't with Chicago. He was a, Nielsen was with uh, um, uh, New Orleans and then Atlanta. Uh, somebody was with one of the coaches, knew Gibson when he was on the Bears. That's down here. Yeah. Did you read that? I, I think didn't, it was a no. D-line coach. Or, I didn't see that. Anyway, so they're familiar. He had a great year with them. He had like seven or eight sacks. Last year he had some injuries, didn't perform as well. But another guy, look, what do you, we got to get guys off the bench that can rush the passer and make a difference on that third down. He feels like Arden Key-ish to me. Yeah, a little bit. Yeah, which is great. We didn't have that last year. Yeah. You know? Um, I really hate saying this. I, I looked at all the, the free agents you may want back. I don't... I don't know how many I really want back, to be honest with you. You know, like Smoot. I don't know. I don't. I mean, if you've got to feel like, you know, there's a last spot that, you know, you know, he's going to play hard. I just, I don't know. I got, I got to get over. Maybe I just got to get over the, I'm, I'm kind of done with some, pl- not done. I don't mean it as. I get what you're saying. Like, a, like new, fresh, something like, like our tackles. I'm ready to move Anton to the left and maybe draft a beast there at 17. You know what I mean? And just say, hey, you know what, Cam, we love you. You've had a great career. You'll be you'll be a Jag. We love you, but it's it's time to move on. You know, Walker. Maybe we keep him around just because he's still under his rookie deal. 
you know, for a swing tackle if we need him, he can plug in. Okay. But I'm I'm kind of ready for You're ready for some new blood. For new blood. That's what excites me about Armstead or Morris. You know what I mean? This, this and Gabe David, like and a lot of the guys, just it's new, fresh blood. They've done well at other places. Now they got to gel it together. Coach has got to bring them in, make sure they all work, and then we go. You know, have a great season. But I do. I feel like I don't know. In some in some cases, depending on who we're talking about, it, it's time to move on. I don't know. I I'm not it's... saying I'm right. By the way, I'm not saying I'm right, but. I, in my opinion, I kind of feel like it's it's it might be time to move on from a few people. You can get a little bit comfortable in a spot, you know. You know, I wonder if part of it. And I'm just thinking out loud here, is because last year they they said no, we're running it back with who we have. We don't really need anybody else, and it it failed. I mean, you can give me all the excuses you want. I don't really care, uh, but they failed. Nine and eight. You can. I know everyone's like, oh wait, it's nine and eight. Well, it was a crappy nine and eight. Uh, the way it ended. But regardless, so maybe I have, I'm a little jaded with that. You know what I mean? Like, you said that last year. So if you're, you're, you're telling me this year, we're going back the same, which we're not. They've added a few. You know what I mean? I don't know. But do you think, like, like for example, like say there's somebody, so there's a player elsewhere that's been somewhere for a long time, and they were good for it, kind of a smoot-ish type player, maybe yeah. had an injury, and their production's kind of dipped a little bit. And you would think that for that player, a change of scenery coming here could help them. I feel like the reverse is also probably true, where there's some guys yeah. here that have been here for a long time, and it might just be time to move on. Like right. you said, like the NFL, people say the NFL stands for not for long, right? Yeah. Like yeah. movement happens in the league. Yeah. And I, I I agree with you. I think there's a lot of there's there's a certain amount of guys that have just been here a long time. They've been through some stuff, and we appreciate their service. But it's probably in the best interest for both sides to have something new. Yeah, I think they felt that way with the safety position, letting Ray Sean go. Right? I love I, he was one of your dogs. I mean, he was he wasn't a problem. I mean, last year, look towards the end, everyone they gave up tackling. I mean, they were all terrible. I don't know what that was all about, but. Seattle's got a good player in Rayshon Jenkins, but well, we, look, we felt like what? Antonio Johnson's going to be better. No one thought they were going to go grab Savage, but now they grab Savage. Now we've got a nice trio again with Cisco leading the pack, right? So we went younger. We refreshed. We, you know, we cut off the, we trimmed the fat and going with the beef. You know we, what I mean? We know this in the NFL. In free with free agency, there are there are exceptions, but for the most part, free agents are what they're short term rentals. Yeah, typically. Yeah, Rayshon Jenkins was a successful signing. Yeah, for sure. He was here for a few years. Without his plays, two years ago, he was here forget for a it. A few years. Yep. He brought a lot of attitude to the team. He did. He Swag. brought a lot of production. Yep. He had one of the best plays in Jaguar history with that pick six against the Cowboys. Yeah. Or the sack. Or the force the sack, of fumble. Yes, absolutely. Like. He was a good signing, yep. and it's time to move up. There's nothing wrong with that. No. At all, for no, either right. side. Right. Good for Rayshon to go elsewhere, have a good deal. Yep. And then it's probably time for the Jaguars to see what they got in Antonio Johnson, see what they got in Darnell Savage, see what they got in maybe another rookie they might bring in. Who That's knows? That's right. And a little bit of that turnover on that, I don't want to say bottom half, this is the bottom half of the roster, but yep. not the high draft picks, guys. Do you have a little bit of that with Tyson? Like you're almost ready to see if there's somebody else that can take over his spot. I don't think I'd do it because I, I really liked him prior to last year. And last year, again, I think that the, the injury did, and I and it's not an excuse. It is what it is. You, you're, I'll, t- I'll give you a great, great quote. Can I? Sidebar. Uh, Kyle Vandenbosch retires from the NFL after six years. Neck injury has to has to shut it down. Hell he of says, a player. Hell of a player. Hell, a really good player. Really good player. He says body wouldn't cooperate and that is a tr- there's not a truer statement when your body says no i mean happen i mean i was never that kind of player but getting hurt knee in 97 foot in 99 you know what i mean it's like sometimes it's just it's not going to happen you know you could it, guys have played seven years go ask tony brackets if he wish he would have played 12 you know Go ask other guys that finish, you know, with 11. Would they play four more years if they didn't have? Go ask Paul Pazlozny if he would have kept playing if he didn't hurt his hip. Go ask, you know what I mean? Like, it, uh, it's that's 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 part of it. Your body's not allowing you to do. What, now, I'm not saying that 
you know, slowly or solely for Tyson's reason for his play, but that's part of his reason last year. I have a little bit of, you know what, maybe it's time to, you know, draft a young stud corner. Maybe he takes over. And I'm all the way there yet, as I am with some other players, you know? Like, you know, I don't know. Like Gotsis. I wouldn't I wouldn't bring Adam back. I don't I don't think he really did anything like and I was surprised. I, I liked it. I've always liked him. Last year just I don't know. Maybe we could chalk it up with, you know, the, the attitude just sucked after they became eight and two or eight and three. I don't know. Maybe none of them really prepared or tried or I have no idea. I w- I'm not in the room. But he didn't he didn't do much. You know, Roy Robinson Harris was okay. But l- let me ask you this. Between Foley, uh, Hamilton, who had injury, and I'll give him a little bit, and Roy Robinson Harris, who they and Gotsis, who they redid all their deals or close to it. What'd they get in return? What'd the Jags get in return? Not much. I don't think. So I almost feel, and it's funny now, if it's like, oh, we got Eric, and now Hamilton, oh, he's going to, I don't know if he is. When he came back those last five games, he wasn't productive. So maybe Eric can get him together. He's got talent. He's a big dude. He's, uh, you know, fast, athletic. I like to, I've, I've been praising the kid, but he also gets tired, and he gets high in his stance, and he gets knocked back into the linebacker level, which doesn't help anybody. So, And you, you reach a point where the unknown becomes greater than the known when the known is underwhelming. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Like, with Devon Hamilton, I kind of know what I'm getting at this point. Right. Right? I'm getting a, a few guy, plays. I'm getting a guy that gets too high in a stance for the most part, yeah. that isn't quite the stalwart I was hoping I drafted. Yeah. He'll give you a few plays a game. Where he'll make a tackle or plug the hole or, or maybe get it pressure on the QB or maybe and you know, hit on the QB. And at this point, being that I have a, a relatively big sample size on that, yep. am I better off cutting bait with a Devon Hamilton or an Adam Gotsis or whoever yep. and taking a flyer on a fifth-round guy and seeing if he pans yep. out and becomes really hyper-productive and really What gives... if you got Fisk in the second round? Right, exactly. That... If he's there, you know exactly. what I mean? What, what if you get Braden Fisk? Who... Exactly. And, could, could and there's it. an unknown there. But the note I've got on my roster is kind of so-so. It's, right. it's not terrible. They're, right. they're not awful players, but it's not great. No. Now, with Cam, it's more – I'm more worried – Cam Robinson, I'm more worried that he could stay healthy for the whole year. I'm not worried about, you know, suspension. When he's healthy, the guy can play left tackle. There's no doubt about it. Um I wouldn't do it at that number, but I'm not – that's not my money. It's not my my business. But They, they have to restructure. they got to do before. something. But I almost feel like in like let's move Anton over. Cam, love you. I hope you can stay healthy and go give some other team a couple years or three years or whatever you can give them. We'll always care about you. We'll always love you. You know what I mean? That kind of thing. But it's time. You know, it's time for the young Lion King to take over for Mufasa, so to speak. And for the rest of the players on the roster, can that be a little bit of a wake-up call of like, Damn! If I don't produce, my ass gonna be <laughs> yeah, out of here. Like, you, listen, that's can some, I mean, that's kind of not for saying, long, like, right? And that's kind of what I was saying with like they ran most of the same squad back from last year. Yep. Yeah, I think it's human nature a little bit. You would know this better than me because you played and you lived it. But I would imagine human nature can set in, and a little bit of comfort can set in. Yeah, I've kind of settled complacent. in here a little bit. I've yeah, kind you of, get complacent. You know, I, I feel really good about my roster spot. I'm not going anywhere. They're yeah. not going to ship me off. So it's not to say these guys aren't working hard, busting their no, ass. Are, but can a little bit of that edge fall off that maybe they well, had two the years ago? The edge fell off last year. Right. So I Collectively, not and, just one guy. Collectively, it fell off. And could off. that be part of why? Yeah. Maybe, maybe. Again, something happened in the locker room. There's no doubt. You got high on your horse and... Thought your, you know what, didn't stink and just went downhill from there. In my opinion, you could tell by, by the, uh, just by the uh, the way they they played the game. All right, so real quick, Chase Young goes to the Saints one year, thirteen million. I think he'll have a nice time there indoors. He'll be quick as heck. You know what I mean? He's gonna. That guy's a good young player. Uh, of course, Justin Fields going to Pitt. Russell Wilson there as well. 
Um, Weird situation. Yeah. Well, I you know, look, regardless of how we feel about Justin Fields, the market spoke for him. You know what I mean? And I like the kid. I think he you can win with him. Uh, I'm not sold on on the quarterbacks coming out. I like the Daniels kid because he can really run. Caleb's, I mean, I saw him make a throw like across his body that was pretty sick. He's got obviously tremendous talent. Um, Drake May, I don't know that maybe they think he's going to be the next Josh Allen, but he didn't. He didn't have a good year last year. Uh, you know, I don't. I don't know. I is. All I know is this, Ryan Poles, you better be right. <laughs> you you better be right by making this move. And, you know, as a Bears fan, I hope you're right. They're number two. Jags always number one for me. But if I had to pick, Bears would be number two. So hopefully they get it right, and hopefully Justin can do something with his career. I will say this, in a game where you got to run, I like Justin Fields. You know what I mean? And if I'm Pitt, I'll take Justin Fields over Kenny Pickett any day of the week. Kenny, by the way, says he handled it well. Word on the street was he didn't handle the Russell Wilson signing very well. That's why they shipped him. He's like, now I'm in a perfect spot in Philly. Okay. You'll be watching Jalen Hurts, you know, for a decade. That's cool. Good for you. Um, I wouldn't have been happy either if they brought in Russell Wilson, but clearly, you know, not again, what do I always say? Nothing happens in the NFL without Reese. Just weird. You have a better chance to beat out Russell Wilson than Jalen Hurts. No doubt. And Russell's, you know, getting up there in age. And and if they didn't ship off Kenny Pickett, I don't think they would have brought in Justin Fields. No, definitely not. I mean, why? Why? Yeah, exactly. You know, why, why trade for him? But again, the market is spoken, and uh, it is what it is. I mean, you you can, I don't know. Look at look at the Ezra Cleveland signing. Look at the other two guards that got massive contracts compared to his. Well, did the market speak? You know? Is he... As good as Hunt out of uh, now he's going to Carolina, or the Damian guy is now Damian from Seattle. I think it's Damian Lewis coming from Seattle to Carolina. They gave both those guys massive contracts, massive guaranteed money. So did the market speak? As there's an old, hey, look, he's a good player, but is he a top notch guard? Or did we just get him for a great deal? I don't know. Maybe we did. Maybe as was like, you know what? I don't really care about all that. I just want to be. Safe, secure, and make make enough money, and I'm good. You know, you look at that guy. Um, that was a funny comment. Uh, the massive, you know what? Guards, go play guard like the Philadelphia Eagles. Uh, Dickerson. Now, granted, he's six nine, so he's on top of the food chain. But that guy's an absolute animal, animal. And I think he played center in at Bama. Incredible player. He gets this big deal. What are you gonna buy? A new lawnmower? <laughs> you know what I mean? That guy's phenomenal. Phenomenal. I tell you what, I would love for him to be on my team. No doubt about that. Well, listen, I think, again, you get into the draft. You know, is there a tackle? There's a lot of tackles there, Graham. I I don't know if they'll go tackle. If they keep Cam, I don't think they do. You know, and again, if they're going to run it back with Cam and Walker, I just don't know. I don't know. You know, look, you you know, the top guys you're not going to get to. Maybe you get to Fawaga, Mims, uh, Guyton. Uh, Fautanu, who I like, he's that kid out of uh, Oregon State, I believe, or Oregon, no, Oregon State, um, just an animal. Uh, do you do, the, only, the only way you go offensive tackle at 17 is if you've told Cam you're moving on without him. That's my opinion. I agree. And if you're telling me, okay, it's between uh, uh, Walker playing left tackle or Anton, I've seen enough of Walker. I'm not saying he's bad, but I want to see Anton at left tackle. I agree. And then then grab an offensive tackle at some point, maybe at number one. We will see. It's going to get more and more exciting as the offseason rolls on. I'll be back on Friday and uh, doing the same thing, 12 noon. Grammage maybe or earlier, we'll figure it out. Grammage usually not. We usually figure out the time. The morning of. <laughs> How you feeling? You ready for an early one or we'll do it at the, <laughs> the later one? And uh, we're pretty flexible with that. But I wish you all a great day and a great week. Brought to you by Team Tommy Mack. Thanks to all of them. Chris Lucero, Bail Bonds, j Dog Junk Removal, and Hauling. All you contractors out there, roofing companies, 
Give them a call, please. Fantastic Code Ninjas, Graffiti Burger Bar, Azar Sausage, Carbon Man Flooring, Solomon Ventures, Michael Nick is his State Farm Agency, been my agent for over 20 years. He should be yours as well. And Beach Life Rentals, that's right. They're all up and down uh, northeast Florida's coast. Paddle boards, chairs, umbrellas, you name it. They have it all for you. They run the pier as well. And, of course, they own Salt Life in his suites right there on Atlantic Boulevard, four blocks from the beach. So that'll do it. Till next time, stay safe and be cool out there, man. And we'll see you right here on Catching Up with Tommy Mack. Peace.